can you really beat the bookmakers? So in this video, you'll be able to see how BBC exploit a loophole from the bookmakers. And I'll have a chat with you after the video. When a pro gambler called Joe told me he had a surefire way to make money off the bookies, but with no risk attached, I simply had to find out more. So why are we here at a tennis court in the middle of Sussex? <laughs> We're here to see court siding today. Uh, court siding is basically cheating. It's getting on a point <laughs> before the umpires press the button and the bookmakers have applied their in-play delay. Right, OK. And why, why, why tennis? Tennis is, is dynamic and it's catatonic. So big things happen on every point and also right. points happen quickly. OK, so what the balls is this court siding racket? Well, most gambling apps allow you to bet live in play on the outcome of a single point or game. Court siding works by having someone physically at the match to exploit time delays of just a few seconds between a point being won or lost and the umpire inputting the score to an electronic device. The info from the umpire is transmitted to the bookies around the world so they can update the odds on their services. But the courtsider shares that same information faster with a partner in crime who can place a bet instantly on the outcome of something that's already happened. So we go around the world trying to find slow umpires. <laughs> So That's it, yes, that is exactly. Too... So we will go to a tournament and we go, old woman with grey hair, she's there. They're, they're undoing their case, they're, they're sliding it to the side, they're pressing it, they're having to put uh, their pin code in. I have one in Romania, he had to put his pin code in for every point. Oh, really? Yeah. The, 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 it'd it'd lock because it would yeah. lock him out, yeah, and he couldn't find a way around it. How often will you courtside? I would say we aim courtside tennis about 35 weeks a year. Wow. Um, Just in England? No. Where? No, no, no. Ma mainly in America. Right. Um, we were also expanding. We had a lot of success in South Africa last year. I'm going to Uganda soon. Uh, Canada's, a, Canada's a good one right, as well. Okay. You want to keep away from Europe. Right, why? Because it's teeming with courtsiders. Right, OK. Yeah. So when you are courtsiding, how do you, how do you communicate with each other? Well, in the old days, we used to just, I used to just do it on my phone. I'd be there. So you take your phone. own mobile? Yeah, I'd take okay. my own, own mobile, and obviously that was great because I didn't have to share any of the profits. Yeah. Um, but now you'll just be gone. Right. Um, okay. Headphones are not, you'll be gone as well. Really? So I, 18 months ago, I decided the thing to do was grow my hair, cover my um, ear, and put the Bluetooth in. So and you've grown your hair as a disc like, to basically hide your Bluetooth? Hide the Bluetooth, yes. Wow, that yeah. is mad. So, to beat the bookies, you're growing your hair to yeah, hide your Bluetooth. That's it, yeah. What will you be looking to make? Last year, me and my business partner would have cleared a million pounds from the court siding. What, mate? Um, a million quid? Yeah, the only problem is that obviously there's humongous expenses, so that won't be the, the profit. But I, I sort of hope to make three to 350,000 a year profit. So, but the one incentive is I hate, absolutely hate the bookmakers. <laughs> I just, I couldn't think of worse people. Well, you could think of worse people, yeah, but they're not, people. they're not far. You've turned a little bit there. You, 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 you don't like them, do you? No, no, no. I just, I just feel like they've contributed to some, some terrible things. And, you know, I, I nearly destroyed my whole life. Yeah. was going hungry or that sort of thing because I was addicted to roulette machines and yeah, I just, just hate it. Courtsiding is not illegal, but it does break the T's and C's of the betting operators and it's outlawed by the governing bodies of tennis. It also requires the use of multiple betting accounts, so Joe buys accounts from other people. Again, this is not illegal, but very much breaks bookmakers' rules. Here we go. Joe's in position and ready to courtside in Florida. Pick it up. Hello. What are you watching? One second. Uh, game four. She is 11 to 8. in the account, yep. What price the server is on 14 to 1. No, 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 she's not 14 to 1. No, I'm calling 
This was already incredibly confusing and I was feeling pretty lost. I knew the theory of what was going on. Joe was telling me to bet on the player serving or the player returning the ball. And I had to get the bet on before the umpire called the point. But doing all that under time pressure was a different story. Returner, one to 12. Oh. I didn't have it in, sorry. Uh, sorry, one second. It was impossible to keep up with what Joe was saying or even what game he was watching. We need to get into the routine. You need to be saying to me, OK, game three, calling love all, calling server. And then I go, yes. And then you go, we're not on 15 love, calling server again. So when I say calling the server, what does that like? So you're telling me to, 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 to say yes if the server wins the point? Yeah. So we're going into the eighth, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm calling the server. Okay, we can only have five hundred now. So I'm calling the server. It's suspended. Okay. We're going to seven. What seven? Nine hundred on the server. One to two. Bet placed. Did we get on? Yeah, we got on, but cash out is suspended. Balance is 14 14. Thank you. Yeah. On two. One to seven. One to seven. Yeah. They're on this as well, but they're on. They're on. Okay, it's refreshing balance, refreshing balance. Yeah, paid 1684. The balance, I'm putting up at 1700 on the return of one to five. Fresh and balance. 2083. We were getting on a roll, and I finally, finally felt like I was beating the bookies. Balance 2198. £2,000 on the server, 2 to 9. Refreshing the balance, refreshing the balance, one second. OK, in the pot is £2,698. <laughs> Calling server, Danila, five to six. What stake? £2,800. Two and a half grand on one to five. Yeah, I'm getting really nervous. It's come through three thousand three hundred and thirty-one pounds. Joe, you're yeah, absolute brother. legend, mate. Thanks very much, Lloyd. Well I was good. At, I was good though, wasn't I? You were actually oh! considering. You were actually shocking at the start, and I was thinking about You were fantastic. Thank you, Joe. It means the world. Uh, listen, we'll give you a shout tomorrow. Yes, bye, bye, bye. That is mad. I was on the phone to a man in Florida that was trying to find slow umpires, found slow umpires. We started off with 800 quid. We've got 3,331 pound. That is insane. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. So basically, let's ask a question. Why did Joe release the secret? So apparently, court signing has been happening for for quite a long time 
okay but what happened is when Joe released the secret they actually alerted the bookmakers and makes it way harder for the other other fellow considers who were active in in United States as well as in Europe okay and I'll tell you why court signing is almost dead. If you manage to catch all of what this Joe was trying to say, he had to regularly buy accounts, right? Because what happened is uh, when he actually bets on his own account, you know, he'll be, you know, uh, banned, you know? Because uh, just like casino share all the, all the ban lists of um, traders or, you know, punters, you know? They have a edge over them. They they actually spread the list, okay. They will spread the blacklist to you know to all the fellow uh, bookmakers, right? Especially in Europe or US, etc. So basically, uh, his names and a lot of uh, names would already be on the blacklist. So what happened is, uh, typically, these uh, courtsiders they will have to purchase accounts from from anonymous people you know but then when they actually purchase uh, accounts from anonymous people you have uh, a lot of problems because you have to make sure that the the account uh, in terms of the withdrawal actually matches the name etc so there are a whole lot of problems not only that okay the moment you are able the the, the moment the bookmakers are able to to identify certain trends you know especially when they were when this uh, BBC reporter was actually betting on the account, he was actually uh, betting like almost like doubling up his account, right? It's like all in situation, that kind of thing. So basically, it makes it too obvious. So once the bookmakers are able to track certain uh, certain movement or certain certain bet, uh, in, uh, certain betting uh, characteristics, right? They will actually uh, penalize the account. They will prevent the the person from from uh, being able to withdraw the money right so basically what happened is uh there's some some comments uh from some the uh, fellow youtubers towards uh, that video okay so there are some people uh, like uh saying that this guy is an idiot to you know let a cat out of the bag you know but then some people are saying that this guy is a genius you know but what happened is uh, court signing is nothing new but it's almost like impossible to make money right now and then if you notice uh, he mentioned he was making almost like uh, one million dollars one million pound with a partner but then there are a lot of high costs involved so the high cost was actually the amount of money that he needed needed to use to purchase the accounts and as well as traveling uh, right so basically, uh, some of my thoughts, uh, I have the same kind of hatred uh, for bookies uh, like Joe, okay? But I believe that some secrets are left better in the dark. So it's always good to fly under the radar, right? So the most important objective is to make money and not flaunt your ego. Okay, basically what happened is, let me share with you why I hate the bookies, okay? Uh, is that all bookies will will cheat their customers in one way or the other okay I'll, I'll do a special video just on that in a in in a later video maybe tomorrow or something like that. I'll, I'll go in depth or as in like how bookmakers cheat their their customers okay so basically uh, so what do you think about this video feel free to post some comments and let me know your thoughts okay thank you bye